Harper passed away, we knew beforehand that we wanted to um, donate her tissue, brain, and blood to scientific research um, in order to kind of give her life here a little more meaning and purpose. It's orange. <laughs> At least she likes the color. Okay. okay, thank you so thank much. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, well, today was Harper's birthday. Uh, it's uh, yeah, kind of a, a sad day for us, um, but it's also a happy day. Uh, Harper was able to donate uh, some tissue samples post-mortem to research, and we were fortunate enough to come out here to San Diego and uh, visit the facility where the research is being done. My name is Alison Muatre, and I'm a, a professor at UC San Diego and uh, I work on neurological disorders, especially neurodevelopmental disorders. We actually start by uh, using cells that were derived from the patients, and this could be skin cells, hair cells, dental pulp cells, and by doing that we can generate what we call cerebral organoids, or mini brains, and that allows us really to understand a little bit more about the circuitry that are involved, and, and if they are affected or not in these neurological disorders. So yes. much. I mean, what you guys do, I, I, I wish all the families could be like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, well, we figured we needed to, you know, let her legacy live on, you know. Uh -huh. So it's uh -huh. something we talked about for years, you know, and so we're just glad we got to, we got to be able to do that. She was inevitably going to, going to die from this disorder. We didn't know when, but that was what was going to happen. Really what this means for seizure research is that they have a human brain to look at. To have a human brain that does seize, to be able to study that with this disorder is huge. If you can control seizures, it's a better life. Yes. yes. The quality yeah. of life, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And that's one thing we were very thankful for the last yeah. three years. Yeah. We were able to introduce the hand boil of RSHO. So have you seen the RSHO? Have you seen it? The use of RSHO and the CBDs impacted her life tremendously. Uh, before RSHO came into uh, her life and ours, uh, we didn't really know who she was as, as a person. RSHO immediately reduced her seizures, just straight up immediately reduced the seizures. And after six months of use, um, she w didn't have any, any seizures, and we maintained that for, for very long time. We started we with started this with and this, and this, and this is where this we found the best combination uh -huh. the control, there yeah. uh -huh. for Harper. But just even in, I mean, initially it was a reduction in seizures, but it was more than that. It was like interactive, eye contact, the fingers came out of the mouth a lot more. Mm. Um, and just being able to be an interactive part of our family, because before then she wasn't. We uh, keep an eye on, on the effects of CBD, THC in, in the brain. Uh, we are definitely aware that some families have been testing uh, hemp oil and have like successful results, um, but uh, we definitely see a, a, a consistency on decrease of the neuronal firing noise that we see in these network cultures. Uh, so if this is true, that may be the mechanism why uh, this may be help, helping to control some of the seizure uh, activities that we've seen some of those kids. In talking to him, he's indicated this will significantly impact the research that he's doing. And what I am here, not only just to see Harper, um, but to find out how she is making that significant impact. It was not an end to her. It was a new beginning for her. Everything that we learn in a dish inside the lab we will never be able to validate, but having tissue, especially brain tissue, in the skin, now we can look at Harper cells, how they look like, and look at her brain, uh, neurons in her brain, and see if we can do the match. Cool. And I bet we can do that. I think it really helped us um, in donating her to science to feel like she had a purpose for living right, here right. and that it lived beyond her existence yeah. here on earth and so just as parents it made us feel really good to do that so that's really exciting for us. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. You guys want to check the cells? We yes, do. we do. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. <laughs> yes. Can we, oh, can go, we go in? in? Okay, okay, great. I know. Well, I just hope that her final donation uh, to the world will bring uh, something very positive, which we what we saw today, we're 100% sure it's going to lead to something huge. Even though it's tar hard that she's not here, uh, it would make it um, more palatable. And that's what we hope for. So she's in that dish? Yeah. And that these are so cells from her skin. 
That is so cool. She's beautiful. I, was, I just couldn't be more happy today. It's her, would have been her sixth birthday. And obviously I wish I could hold her the way she was when she was five. But uh, I am so fortunate. I, I was so excited. I came out, I was like, oh my God, I held Harper, you know? And, and that's exactly what I kind of thought today would be. I was a little afraid because um, I thought that I hadn't really maybe emotionally prepared myself for today. What we saw and what we held today so those are living cells. Harper lives and her legacy of hope lives on. And to me, that's just, you can't, ask, you can't ask for anything better for your child to be able to do what their purpose is. And I just feel like that's great. So it was very emotional to see her today.